Hi guys, this is Rudy again with another pen video. This video here is not going to be a review. It's going to be part of a, not really serious, but like a type of videos that I've started to shoot recently, which is sort of like overview videos. Sometimes these overview videos are comparisons of like quite similar pens. Sometimes it's comparisons of um, pens that are sort of similar but different. Let's say a Sailor Pro Gear and a Sailor Pro Gear Slim or a Pilot Vanishing Point and a Pilot Decimo. This overview video here, and I've already shot a video, for instance, as well, an overview video of the Kaweco Sports line, comparing the AL Sport to the Classic Sport to the Skyline Sport and all that. This here is a video that concentrates a wee bit on the Pelican Souverain series. I loaned an M1000 for review recently. Uh, that's not my fountain pens. The other ones that you have laying, that you see laying right here are mine. And I thought, let me take that as a chance to shoot an overview video where we look at the differences, especially in size in between the M400, which is the same size that the M200, the M600, the M800 and the M1000. Quite nice. We have a nice color cascade here because that's a Stresemann, that's a classic black green, that's a Stresemann and that's a classic black green. So more specific, Pelican M405, the 05 indicates the chrome trim, uh, the, 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 the rhodium trimming. Then we have a M600. Then we have a M805 Stresemann and the M1000 and those both with the green stripes and these two, of course, then with the gray stripes. All right. So why am I doing this video myself when I got my first Pelican fountain pens? I found it kind of difficult from, you know, looking the pens up online to actually really see when you look at the measurements, how large they really are. Yes, you see the measurements. Then you probably start doing funny stuff like the stuff that I have then done back then, which is something like, you know, you start drawing the pen measurements on a piece of paper in order to try figuring out how large they will really be. Then you maybe make a small paper model of the pen, try to hold it in hand, or you go to a pen store and try those pens out. That's probably the latter, the most efficient way of doing it. But if you only look up measurements online, you won't, you will never really get a good idea of how big or small those pens really are. So I thought, since I struggled with my with that myself, that it might be kind of helpful to you to see a video that sort of compares those pens a little bit. And that's basically what that video here will be about. It will be a comparison of the pens, of the nib sizes, of the cap sizes, of the pens in hand, to just get a sense for how large they are. Of course, the M400 is the smallest. Then you have the M600. You then have the M800. And then you have the M1000. And while the difference in between each of them is not that substantial, it still is a considerable difference, especially when you go from smallest to largest. Let me try to sort of align them and hold them in hand like that. I won't talk a lot about the properties of the pens and whatnot, since as said, this is intended to sort of be a overview video of the sizes I hope I get them sort of aligned, not exactly maybe, but I think, you know, you get the point when you look in length, when you look at diameter, of course, especially when you compare an M400 to an M800, you definitely see the size difference. Sure enough, the M400 against the M800, that's a baby, right? Let's hold the 
M600 against the M1000. Sorry, the M1000, of course. I think I said M8, uh, M1, M800, but of course it's the M1000. The M600 is by no means a small pen. That's about the size of a Lamy 2000. But compared to the M1000, it's a quite small pen. I have the M800 now here against the M1000. That M1000 is really a large pen. Let's uncap them bit by bit and look at the differences in nibs. So that's the nib of the M400. That's a 14 karat gold nib. Now comes the nib of the M600, which is also a 14 karat gold nib. The nib of the M600 is already quite a bit bigger than the nib of the M400. Let's bring in the nib of the M800 here, which again is quite a bit larger than the nib of the M600 and of course also than the nib of the M400. And now here comes the, <laughs> the monster, the M1000. That's really a big, big nib here. M1000 and M800 are 18 karat gold nibs. The M600 and the M400 are 14 karat gold nibs. They all, all these three write pretty similarly, I would say. The biggest difference is the nib of the M1000, which is very bouncy, springy, a very cushioned writing experience, very soft, very nice, quite, kind of di quite different from the others. You try to align those also a little bit. It's a bit difficult to hold four pens in hand and try to align those. I don't do that very often in everyday life, but I hope you sort of get a picture, an overview of the difference of the nibs in size. These are Pelika nib sizes, so it's very difficult to say this is a number five or number six or number eight size nib because it's sort of like Pelika nib sizes. What's also probably interesting to look at are the sections. You see that the M400 and M600 are quite thin sections. I think the M600 is sort of in the, you know, wider sphere of a Lamy 2000 again. And then the sections of the M800 and the M1000 are quite a bit larger. Again, you see it most clearly, of course, when you compare the M400 to the M1000. Here we have an M600 and the M1000. This is an M800 and an M400. If you wonder about this, M600 and M400. M600 and M800. As said, this is about a Lamy 2000. The M800 seems to be sort of the sweet spot for most people in terms of pen size. I like it most of all those four pen sizes as well. The M800 is my personal fav favorite. I also like the M200. However, many people say the M200 is slightly small for them, especially slightly thin. I think if you're an average pen user, you're completely unsure which is the re which is the right size for you. I would tell you go with an M600 because the M600 really is an average size fountain pen. The M400 may be a bit small. The M1000 is oversized anyway. The M800 may also be a little bit small. So if you're unsure. If you don't really know, but if you get along with a Lamy 2000, a Lamy Safari, a Pilot Metropolitan or something like that, go with an M600 really. That's really a good size. That's really a nice sized fountain pen. Well, that's that with that quick overview of those pens. I can last but not least try to arrange them a little bit here so that you see a length comparison how they are uncapped when me when I'm not holding them in hand really, when I just put them here like this. Hope that again gives you sort of a last idea. 
I thought it's maybe a helpful video, wanted to use the chance to have a M1000 that as said is not mine here in house to shoot that overview video. I hope it was helpful to you and I hope to see you at the next review. Bye bye.